Within six months, our client goes from driving a taxi to driving a brand new Mercedes, spending two grand a week. Where did all the money come from? The British intelligence brought him in as a double agent. He was supposed to lead them to the terrorist cell before the attack. And that's where it all went wrong. I am now abundantly aware of the enormous amount of security cameras okay. in London. All I know is that apparently London is the most surveyed state in, in the free world, and who knew? Um, and the rise of them has been exponential since about 2005. I think there's lots of surveillance cameras everywhere. I just think maybe, maybe British people have had more of a dialogue about it publicly. They're watching us right now. <laughs> It made me feel very indignant and very American to okay. watch it and to go, we put traffic cameras up at lights to mm. catch people that make illegal turns too late, mm. and I, but we immediately dismantled them. Right. Like, they're now illegal. You didn't even have to pay the tickets. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, that was my one patriotic moment. <laughs> okay, okay, good. <laughs> I'm glad that it brought out a bit of patriotic zeal in you. That's good. <laughs> I'm watching these, you know, sometimes as many as 12 cameras yes. going at once, and I, I loved the idea of using so much of that kind of footage. Yeah. Did you find that when you were creating the film that that made it that, like, 12 times harder, essentially, as compared to other movies like Intermission that don't have these kinds of needs? Yeah, yes, it did, is the, is the short answer. But what was fascinating was, you know, the... the um, it grew as an idea as we worked on the film. And, it, you know, it, it was largely because like, my great DP, Adriano Goldman, would often say to me, do you want me to cover this with a, a, a digital camera simultaneously? And I would say, yeah, fine. But very, you know, and you wind up looking at this material in the cutting room later on and going, oh, my God, this is amazing. And, and we, we lent on that material a lot more. So it grew and became much more part of the spine of the film. Now, did you do uh, any kind of research similar to what the actors did? They, they did so much to yeah. prepare. Uh, the, their first trip in, to London, we, we introduced them to a whole bunch of barristers and special mm -hmm. advocates, and, and we sat in on, on court sessions together. Oh, so, you were there with them. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. Do yeah. you think you could commit a crime and get away with it now? No. Oh. I don't. I don't. And, and I don't. I'm afraid, no. A lot of the people that I met... Um, I certainly would want on my side if I ever did make him <laughs> a, a misdemeanor, um, and I certainly wouldn't want to face them in in the in, in the witness box if I was if I, if my story was less than watertight. Put it that way. I did get told by the barristers that if I ever did need a second career, they would seriously consider letting me. I in. think that makes perfect sense. <laughs> I'm with them. I'm glad they <laughs> saw that ridiculous. in you. Well, I'm glad you did too yes, because you... that's just uh, that's just the acting. I can say I can actually tell you now that there is nothing in my real makeup that would make me a good barrister. Nothing. Sometimes the most surprising <laughs> thing about this job is that y'all are acting. Because yeah, I'm really exactly. into it. I'm like, oh, of course. You just she's... believe that's what I. Uh, that, that's no. Somebody else wrote those words and I said them in a in a convincing, incredible manner. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and w let's get you a wig. Let's make yeah. you a judge. You think I can carry off that wig, the powder, the powder wig? You could carry it off like nobody's business. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.